Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another overview. And this one is going to be on an extension of the pattern blocks. We already did a separate session just for the fractions. And now we're going to look at pattern blocks and all the other many things that we can use them for. So this will be the quick overview of some of the information regarding pattern blocks and what we're going to cover. And then we'll hopefully see you in the hands on section, um, the second recording right after that. Let's begin with our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are meeting from across Alberta on Treaty 6, 7, and 8 territories. And we honor and acknowledge all of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples who have lived, traveled, and gathered on these lands for thousands of years. We acknowledge that these lands are traditional meeting grounds, giving voice to its original peoples and the story of creation in a way that history has forgotten. So just a quick overview um, in case you're watching this pattern block one for the first time and haven't done the other one yet. Um, just want to talk a little bit about what they are uh, so that you're familiar with them and the new additions that come along with that. So pattern blocks are just shapes. They can be made of wood or uh, plastic. They come in six different colors or in end shapes. We have hexagons, equilateral triangle, there's squares, there's trapezoids, rhombus. Um, there's two different kinds of rhombus. There's a, a dark blue one, a little bit fatter you can see, and then a really light colored one, light wood colored one, which is quite skinny. And these pieces fit together. Um, they have some common links that they share, and that allows us to create patterns, to stick them together literally and, and create different designs. But moreover, that also allows us to figure out different sizes of area, perhaps perimeters, allows us to look at how they fit together as a fraction of a whole, all of those different pieces. They've been around for a while. They're, they're not new to the world, for sure not. Um, they're kind of a part of a resurgence from 1963 when they were developed by Edward Prenowitz. And it was in 1989 that there was a huge math movement and basically a culture change in how we were delivering math to students in the schools. And we went sort of went from, from a telling um, situation of stand up and deliver only to very much more of investigating and understanding of the math. So it wasn't just about the answer. It was also about how did we get there and what, what explanations and tools do we have in our back pocket that we can explain as a student to our teacher to say, this is my understanding. This is how I've rationalized how this answer came, came about. So it could be an algorithm for sure, but not always. And we also know that not every student can understand math through an algorithmic perspective. So offering them other ways to unpack their understanding prior to using an algorithm as we've now learned has become very, very important. And that change came in a reform of 1989. So by the time sort of 1990, 91 came around, there were lots of manipulatives that were hitting the market. There were also lots, and not that they weren't in the schools before, but maybe not with the same resurgence that we'd seen, but also what we, we had was a, a lot of PD at the time that was being offered to schools across the province of Alberta for a number of years on how to implement all of these. And I think we got to a point where everybody was just saying, we, we've done this, like we've done this for five years now, we, we've got it, we know what we're doing. We kind of lost that process. And I think now is a good time to kind of revisit some of the things that maybe we've forgotten, or maybe there's some that you haven't seen before. And this might be one of those. This is the original pattern blocks, the six of them. And these are what now are called the Desi blocks. And they don't work in isolation. You definitely can use them separately, um, but they also are built on the foundations of some of the things that you use these for and how they fit into these because they, they are connected. And so we will be using these uh, both when we look at pattern blocks and all the different aspects that we can apply them for. We will use the Desi blocks as well. There's also another set right now. There's a brown set, which is another trapezoid. Looks very different than the other trapezoids that you're seeing in, in our usuals. Um, and they fit over top of the hexagon and actually create a quarter. 
not as commonly seen and used, but they are in a number of programs that I'm going to show you. And then there's also one that takes the, the uh, 90 degree angle triangle, a very small one, which is, is literally half of the green one. And so again, it offers us now a different number of totals that can cover the hexagon and also uh, a different half that we can see or a different um, twelfth that we can also talk about. There's also these double helix and what's called the chevron, which is really two of the rhombus put together and it's colored in black. And when we use the double hexagon, it changes the whole value, um, makes this one a half instead of a whole. So again, as we talked about that in the fraction section, we won't get into that right now, but there are some new ones here that are available and you may or may not have them in your kits already. You don't have to have everything to make it work. But it's nice if you have the more different um, sizes that we have that are available, the more opportunities we have to express uh, fractions, to show area, to show different kinds of perimeter measurements, depends on where you want to go with it. Another common question is, aren't attribute blocks and pattern blocks identical? And in a lot of schools, the pattern blocks are used interchangeably as attribute blocks, because really when I talk about an attribute, it could be the shape of an object, it could be the color of an object, it could be the weight of an object, it could be the thickness of an object. So those are all attributes. So I could certainly use pattern blocks to address different attributes. The true attribute blocks though, um, that were called attribute blocks, had some very different shapes in them as well. They had the traditional hexagon, they have the triangle, but they also have a rectangle, they have a circle. And what you're seeing is that they're of different sizes. So one of the attributes that I could do when I'm setting these tiles out is I could group them according to size, not according to color. Or I could group them according to color and not worry about size. Or I could group them according to color and shape. So again, it all depends on what, what the rules are that you're looking for, because this is how an attribute block was, was put together. So you'll see that they're really only in the three colors, and they come in different sizes, and they have different shapes. And so we are able to basically look at those through the lens of just the attributes. So there are some, some little uh, dials that you can have. You can make some of these on your own. But really, where students can spin, I'm looking for a large one, I'm looking for thick, for it to be red, and a circle. So what one would that be? And then they would pick out the attribute. You could also use hula hoops. Can I show that in some of our resources as well? But this is a good time to go and get some that are left over at the Dollarama or Dollar Tree store. Hula hoops are great Venn diagrams, and I don't have to use three of them. I could just use two of them if I want them to sort. And what are the common areas that they put in on uh, inside of the common one between the two, or in this case, between the three, depending on what the rule was. And so, again, those are great ways for kids to be interactive. You can put the hula hoops on the, on the carpet, on the floor, and then give them their tiles and whatever rule you've given them or no rule. Maybe you're letting them decide where things are gonna go. But remember that a Venn diagram, I need to do that as a model first. Not going to assume that students just know what a Venn diagram is and how it works. So where do I get them? Well, pattern blocks are pretty common. They're not, like I said, not new. And there's quite a few of the distributors that carry them. You even will occasionally see them at Walmart, um, depending on how big it is and, and how big their educational section is. Sometimes they carry the attribute blocks there too. I've put some of the ones in here. These are not by far any, they're not saying that these are better than anybody else. These are just some of the places that you can go. They're the common ones that most people are familiar with, but Again, you may have a, a, uh, a supplier that you use for other resources that may carry them as well. So I would encourage you to check with whoever you've been doing your orders with. Same thing with the Desi blocks. However, there are only limited numbers right now that are carrying that. So um, if you want to invest in those, then you need to go to one of these three right now. I would imagine over time, there'll probably be more of them. Um, but again, that just gives you some options. And then same with the attribute blocks. As I said, quite a few places. Uh, I put a note at the top here because I don't want to put prices on here, but I will say you should shop around. 
Some of these places have the same number of attribute blocks for half the price. So you do have to do a little bit of shopping. And sometimes a lot of our pattern blocks and things like that will come on sale throughout the year. So just keeping your eye out for those um, as well. And I did put this on the bottom here, hula hoops. If you, if you have never actually thought about using those as a Venn diagram, you don't just have to use them for pattern blocks. You could use them for a lot of things. Um, they're a good investment to have for sure. There is also some of the suppliers, really the two of them right now um, that, that sell the majority of the Desi blocks, also have some resource books that you can use. And that will just give you some other ideas of how to implement those, maybe how to use them for decimals. I may do another follow-up video here to show you how to use pattern blocks generally and with the Desi blocks, how to use them to express decimals. So we'll have a look at that as well. But nonetheless, if you're just looking for some ideas and you like, they have some little um, books in them as well that would allow, or pages in them that would allow you to photocopy them and use them as a worksheet with the students. So lots of opportunities that you can explore. Now, what if I don't have any pattern blocks? I watch this hands-on and say, wow, like we really absolutely need to do this with our students. You do have some virtual opportunities as well. And so remember, we're saying physical, like the hands-on, like really getting them engaged in that is the first choice. But we also know that virtual is also a manipulative. It doesn't mean it has to be in my hand. And I have opportunities. So I've, I've listed again, they're not in any particular order. I gave you some information about each one of them. If you were looking for some um, samples that students could model a pattern after if they're just learning how to use pattern blocks I show you some in the hands-on you can find some in here but you can also google them on uh, just to do a google search and there's a number of free ones that you can download as well so lots of different places that you can go to to uh, use the hands-on pieces as well this is also um, a set that I will show you in the hands-on I've enlarged them uh, and these, again, are ways that I can tile the plane. I can just create a pattern and keep the pattern going over and over and over again. But these are also kind of remarkable to look at because they give you the illusion of 3D. So it's a little bit of art built into this. And how do we get perceptive depth perception when we use color? Um, and they could create a, another one of their own which would give them that sense that it pops out at them or it dives in like this one looks like it's sitting down and moving in this one pops out at you so just to give them an opportunity to play with some of those so in the hands-on we're going to look at i'm a i'm a first-time kindergarten student or preschool student and i'm just learning about pattern blocks and I need to learn the names of them and I need to figure out how I can make pictures. So we'll start right from the beginning and then we'll just kind of work our way through. I don't necessarily go just by one grade to the next. I will in try and encompass a whole bunch of things in there, right up to equations. We'll do some of those as well. And like I said, I may do another one. Um, you can just check back now and then I'll try and do one for dec decimals as well so that people can use them. I think it's important that students know that pattern blocks and any physical manipulative you have in the school, they should see it in as many different locations as they can in different applications so that they don't walk away thinking we only do pattern blocks when we're doing a pattern. We only do pattern blocks when we are doing a tile. That They should see it in geometry for measurement of angles. They should see it in perimeter. They should see it in area. Like Just make sure that we always use the manipulative in a variety of different applications so that they don't believe that it should only be used for one thing. So we'll cover a lot of these. I'm gonna go through perimeter and area with no algorithms. So we're gonna talk about area. How do we figure out what the area of a shape is without using any base times height kinds of things. Going to do the same thing with the angle measures. How do we figure out the angle measures of each of the tiles without a protractor? And again, the kids quite catch on to this quite quickly and they quite like it. And the fact that they can do it without a tool, another tool, um, then they have another way to fall back on questions if they're doing the exam and they get stuck about exam or angles or measures, then they have some, some other ways that they can get at the um, solution to the problem. 
So I will see you uh, hopefully in the hands-on one, which will be the video right below this one. Uh, and so we will see you there. Thanks so much, everyone.